Bible Lesson 33. Get started with a word of prayer. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings to us. I pray that you would be with each of my students. Help them as they um, are working on all of their schoolwork during these uh, difficult and strange times. I pray, Lord, that you just give them um, the wisdom and the grace to do all their assignments well and to the best of their abilities, Lord, not just uh, to please men, but more importantly, to please you. I pray, Lord, that you would help them find ways that they can help others and share the blessings that they have been given with other people. We love you so much, and in your name we pray. Amen. Looking at our verse, what is love? Love is sacrificially giving of myself, expecting nothing in return. So in my prayer today, I pray that you guys would find ways to um, be able to bless others just as you have been blessed. Now, we all go through times of difficulty, right? We all have things that we're struggling with, um, family members who might be sick, things like that. But overall, you guys are very blessed, living very blessed lives. You have parents who love you and take care of you. Um, some of you may only have one parent. Some of you might have both parents. Some of you have lots of family around you, around you. Some of you only a few. But you've all been very blessed. And you all have ways that you can reach out to others who are less fortunate, have less blessings than you, and bless them. Without expecting anything back from them, that is love. So I want you guys to try to find people that you can show that love to. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Remember, charity meaning love. So God really expects us to go out and to try to do our best to show love towards others. In Espanol, dice, Primero de Corintios 13, 13, Y ahora permanece la fe, la esperanza y el amor. Estos tres, pero el mayor de ellos es el amor. Remember, you guys need to be saying these to me through a video or if you see me at church. Right now, I'm basically mostly only coming on Sunday mornings because of the virtual classes and um, the schedule there. But if you want to say them to me in person, Sunday morning would be a good time to look for me. Other than that, you need to send in your video. Remember, we're winding down. We only have a couple more weeks. And then um, your opportunity to say these verses will be closed. This is not optional. If you don't say your verses, you're not going to get a good grade. So say your verses, not an option. Okay, let's look at your homework. First of all, you need to complete Doctrine 3 4. Why did God make you and all things? Then, Diego, you need to be presenting the doctrine. How long did it take God to do his work of creation? Send that to me today. I'm excited to see it. Heston, you need to prepare to present the doctrine, why did God make you in all things? And that would be tomorrow that you will present that to me. Let's get started with our lesson, Acts 17, 1 through 15. Paul turns the world upside down. Let's see what that means. Off with verses 1 through 4. Now, when they had passed through Antipopolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. That means there were a lot. So we see here that Paul and Silas, they pass through Amphipolis, Amphipolis, I don't know, however you say that, Am, Amphipolis, I think, in Apollonia, and reached Thessalonica. So if you look over there on the map, the spinning stars, they went from Philippi through that area. Now, my blue arrow just gives you something to follow, but the path was most likely where you see the red, that would have been the path, okay? So they went from Philippi to Thessalonica. Paul found a synagogue there. Now, this is not in the land of Israel. The land of Israel is, whoo, lejos de aquí. So this is not where the Jews would have lived, but they have been scattered over here to this area. So when Paul found a synagogue, a group of Jews, he naturally went in there to preach to them. Where it says in verse 2, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. 
That's saying that that was Paul's uh, typical custom. He would go in, he would go to the Jews first to preach to them, remember, so as not to offend them, so as to have more of an open door um, to the Jews as well as to the Gentiles. They wouldn't be offended that Paul went to the Jews first. So he started out with the Jews, then whether they believed or not, he then moved on to the Gentiles. He pointed out that the Messiah they were waiting for had to suffer and die. And so this Messiah was this Jesus who had already come. Remember, the, most of the Jews, they rejected that Jesus was the Messiah. They knew that they were waiting for a Messiah, but they expected it to be someone who was going to free them from the Romans, not someone who would free them from sin. And he was saying that based on all the prophecies, everything that's been told, of course the Messiah had to die. He died for your sins. Then he rose again the third day. It was Jesus. You missed it. Jesus is the Messiah. Some of the Jews went ahead and believed, and many of the Greeks, because this is this is Greece, um, so the, the pe other people besides Jews who would have attended the synagogue would have been Greeks who were either converted to Judaism or believed in this religion. So the Greeks that were listening, that the devout Greeks means the religious Greeks, the ones who were um, converting to Judaism, and then many women also believed. It's interesting to see that um, Luke incur, um, includes in his book that there were women involved. There are people these days who think that, you know, God doesn't, God ignores women and things like that. But we see here that Luke makes sure through the Holy Spirit's guidance to point out that women were there. The men are the ones who are kind of the heads, the leaders, but women were there. Let's move on to verses 5 through 9. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. So what just happened? The unbelieving Jews, they got together with some wicked men that where it says lewd fellows of the baser sort, that would be like your thugs, your gang members. So they got those men to come and grab Paul and Silas from Jason's house and bring them out to this mob of people. Who knows exactly what their intentions were, whether they wanted to kill them or just beat them up or assault them in it in some way. <clears throat> not sure their intention because they never got to do that. Paul and Silas, based on God's protection, were not there. We don't really know much about who Jason is. We just assume that he was probably a Jew. But other than that, we don't really know too much about him. But they went ahead, and when they couldn't find Paul and Silas there, they took Jason and some others instead and brought them to the rulers and accused them of associating with these men who were turning the world upside down. What do they mean, turning the world upside down? Well, this was referring to the fact that they were preaching about a king, a messiah, a savior. The only king in Roman provinces was Caesar, the ruler of the Roman Empire. And it was treason if someone were to um, consider somebody else to be the king. So they were saying they were being treasonous. And we know that it's not treason because they're not, God never says that you're supposed to only follow God and not follow your human authorities. God advocated, Jesus said, give unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Obey your human authorities, but you also have the uh, responsibility to obey God. And if your human authorities are disobeying God, that's the only time you can disobey them is so that you obey God above them. But it's not he's not advocating at all to disobey your human authorities. The troubled rulers, they were uh, upset that there would be these people here that were um, perhaps saying that you shouldn't worship Caesar. You shouldn't obey the, uh, the ruler of the Romans. They were a little nervous about this. So they made Jason and the people with them pay a bond and let them go. So this would have been money that they had to give to the rulers and then if Paul and Silas and the people with them quote unquote caused any more trouble they would have to forfeit this money that they had paid. So let's see what happens. Verses 10 through 15. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night into Berea, unto Berea 
who coming thither went to the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge of the word of God, had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they, conducted, and they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus, for to come to him with all speed, they departed. So we see here that Paul and Silas were sent away that night to Berea. So they knew that it was not safe for them to stay there at Thessalonica anymore. They had been there for probably about four to six months. They preached in the, sap, the, the synagogues for about three weeks, but had been there um, in all, preaching to the Jews and the Gentiles, about four to six months. But they sent them away right away so that no um, more problems could come up. They sent them that night to Berea. So if you look at the spinning stars, they went from Thessalonica to the second star, Berea. The Jews and many Greeks there at Berea, both men and women, again, gladly received the gospel. So this is a, quite a change from Thessalonica. They were happy, and the Bible says that they were more noble than those in Thessalonica, meaning like they, they understood what Paul was saying more than the others. Whoops. They searched the scriptures for themselves to see if Paul was speaking the truth. They weren't just going to believe it at face value. When you're listening to someone preach, do you just believe everything that person says, or do you look in the Bible to see if there's more to it? You should always be doing that. It doesn't matter who the preacher is, whether it's Mr. Mark or somebody else, you should always be looking in the Bible, checking out what they're saying. And that's what they did. And they realized that Paul was speaking the truth. And so they accepted it. But then we see Jews from Thessalonica heard they were there and came over to make trouble. Just like what happened with Antioch and Iconium, they, the um, troublemakers from Antioch came over to Iconium and they had to move on. They also followed them to Lystra. So the very same thing happened. These envious, jealous Jews who were not happy that people were listening to Paul rather than to them came over to make trouble. You know, jealousy and envy, those are useless emotions. You can't really do anything good with them. If you have jealousy and envy in your life, wanting what others have, that's something that you need to ask God to help you get rid of because it is not going to help you. It's only going to tear you down. These Jews they traveled all the way from Thessalonica to Berea to cause trouble. But there are a lot more important things you could be doing with your life. Yeah, there definitely are. So Paul that night was taken to Athens right away. While Timothy and Silas, they stayed for a little while longer until Paul got to Athens and then he wanted them to come. Exactly why it took longer for them to get there, we don't know. If you follow the blue arrow, he went up from he went from Berea down to Athens. We know that he went by sea, so if you follow the, the red to where the blue arrow is, follow the starting point through the red is really the path he would have taken. But he went down from Berea to Athens. Why Paul, um, Silas and Timothy stayed? It's probably that since Paul was the main speaker, he was the one in the most danger, whereas Timothy and Silas, they weren't quite as, um, people didn't quite notice them quite as much, so they, they could have stayed a little longer. But then once Paul got to Athens, he wanted them with him, and so he asked for them to come. So this is quite an event, eventful uh, missionary trip so far. They keep getting run out of every city that they go to, but all the while, they are following God's plan, and they're obeying what God has for them do. Do you obey what God wants you to do even when you feel like you're being discouraged, like every everywhere you turn, it's not working out? Even if you feel that way, keep following God and doing what he wants you to do. No matter what, he is going to bless you as long as you are obedient. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It's a much shorter lesson than it has been, so... <laughs> You can hopefully finish your work earlier today. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.